Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I am once again back in Rita Berman's My Journey Through Europe and we're going to continue on this little Tuscany scene here. So we just got the car with all of the, the luggage and everything left so I'm going to go ahead and get started on those. I did ask what you guys wanted to see and it seemed to be that you guys wanted me to continue on with ink tense pencils so that's what I'm going to be doing so let's get started so my plan is to pretty much start out with covering almost everything in this mustard color I really want to have that golden glow that we got on the rest of the picture from that sunset so I'm literally going to go ahead and I'm going to cover everything apart from the very center and like the the drawings on the car I'm going to cover pretty much everything else in this mustard color and what I usually would have done is to speed this up however I think a lot of you are saying that you prefer me to even do the long parts in real time so I'm going to continue on doing that instead of speeding this part up so please let me know what you think about that would you do you prefer me to do everything including the long tedious things in real time or do you want me to speed them up Thank you. 
before I forget it, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and add those, that little color that I've missed in those, on those behind those leaves. So these little circles and things cut out here. I'm just going to go ahead and just cover those while I remember to do it. And then we'll keep going with the mustard. So I'm just going to get started with the activation. As you see with this car, as I mentioned, I'm um, only sort of covered the outer edges of it, sort of where the sun would hit because the sun is setting behind this car. So I sort of just added a little bit there. I did add a little bit of that mustard to the wheels as well, but it's just so they're not completely like charcoal or, or black kind of color. So I've just sort of added in just that little bit of the color here and then we're going to go over the top. But I wanted all of the sort of the drawings on the car to be in like a proper, like a nice sort of bright color and not have that yellow undertone to it. So I just, that's why I've decided to leave that center of the car completely white. Now I do hope you have been enjoying this series so far. If you have, I would love it if you take the time to give this video a thumbs up as it is the easiest way of helping out my channel and just letting me know that you're enjoying this. And of course, if you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content.
so I'm going to go ahead now and get started on the little clock up the top I want to make it like a wooden one I was tossing out between doing it in like a gold tone or if I was going to do it as a wooden clock I decided to go with a the wood theme so I'm just getting in here now with this willow color and then we'll add a few other tones of brown afterwards I did unfortunately manage to cut off just the very top there but it is exactly the same so you're not missing more than just like two of those little drop things that's just off the top there. So for the clock face I did decide to go a little bit more of those golden tones and have it slightly more metallic. I'm not probably the best at doing gold tones with these Inktense pencils, I haven't really done it a whole lot but we're just going to add in some nice warm colours there and just make sure that we have a bit of a difference there between our highlights and our shadows. Now instead of waiting for all of this to dry, I'm going to do the same method that I've done in the other two um, parts of this series and that is using my water brush directly on the tip. That way I can put down a little bit of pigment and sort of blend it out 
and as the water releases the more and more diluted that color would be but as you can see i'm not putting like a lot of pigment onto my paintbrush i'm only using a tiny tiny little bit and especially once you do this with the darker colors be really really careful just like one tiny dab at the tip just to pick up a tiny bit of pigment and i'd rather you go a couple of extra times rather than accidentally putting down way too much pigment because the ink tents are permanent once they dry so they are very difficult to pick up color once you got it down onto the paper it's not like your watercolor pencils they are ink so just keep that in mind when you're doing this technique
so I'm gonna do this little trunk suitcase thing there also in some browns but I just want to try to use slightly different brown tones on there just so it's not completely identical to this big clock
Now, after I just did this, I did step away from this page for a tiny little bit, so it did dry in the meantime, but obviously the magic of editing, it looks like I'm just going straight back on with a pencil. So don't do what it looks like I'm doing here. Just make sure that if you are putting your pencil straight back onto the paper, just make sure that the paper is actually dry first. If not, you can wreck the tooth.
a little but butterfly here I did decide to go with like the monarch butterfly tones so I've got my orange or my cadmium orange and then instead of I'm a bit scared of using the blacks in the ink inktense because they are like crazy dark so I'm gonna do for the little details on there I'm gonna use my bark color that I've used before so it's a little bit more forgiving and I could potentially if I wanted to make it darker it can always go over with a black some sort of black pencil even like a polychromos or something like that afterwards if you want to darken it up even further but I just feel like I just need something that's not crazy dark in case I accidentally put it somewhere where it shouldn't be
so this little lamp in the middle there even though it's on the top of a what looks like a moving a, like a, a moving car or something like that not as in the car is driving but that someone is someone are moving a whole lot of things if that makes sense I'm not rambling but I kind of still want it to look like it's glowing and that the light is on in there so I'm just gonna go in with these sort of golden yellows and tones just to make it look like there's a bit of light coming out of it even though it probably not even plugged in because well it's on top of a car
So with this cat at the moment, I'm just going to try to build up a little bit of dimension to it. I'm not going super crazy, like I could go in and do like complete and utter like tons of shadows and things, but I just want to give it a little bit of shape, but I'm not going to go too overboard with this one. I've, I haven't really gone for like, the realism thing with this picture. I tend to not do that too much with the Rita Berman pictures because they are kind of a little bit whimsical so you can get away with doing things a little bit differently than what I usually would do. But I'm just sort of adding in some darker brown tones where things are curving around and where, yeah, just where I think it will suit a little bit. It's kind of half inspired by my my childhood little tabby cat so that's why I chose these little colors thought he looks very comfortable there on top of the little pillow I'm just going to let this cat dry for a little bit and I'm going to head back onto the plant just on the side. I think it's a monstera plant. So I'm just going to go in and just make these leaves a little bit darker in the center and probably do the pot and then I might jump back onto the cat for a little bit. So I'll be jumping a little bit around. So there is a method to the madness, I promise. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So for this little frame here, I went down with the matte brown and the second I activated it, I kind of regretted it a little bit because it looks actually really close to that Shiraz color that we've got for the pillow. So I think if I'd done it again, I would have possibly chosen a different color, but I'll leave that up to you whether you will continue like I'm doing or just pick something a little bit different. So you could always do it in like maybe like a gold frame or a silver frame or something like that if you wanted to. Um, and whether you want to make it a mirror or a picture or something like that, then uh, yeah, so as you can see now, it looks it looks almost identical to that Shiraz color. It's very very similar. So yes, I had a major regrets at this point, but once you've activated it, there's not much you can do.
although you can't technically see anything underneath that green book I'm kind of pretending that there is a blue one underneath there as well just because if not that green book looks like it's floating in mid-air so this has to be something underneath it so I've just decided to make it a blue book Once again I will be jumping a little bit back and forth between certain items on here. I'm just going to start on this little, what's it called, palette? Blending palette. Goodness me, technical terms and my mind just goes blank. But I've just decided to sort of put in some like brown tones here and there, still having that yellow shine every sort of 
<laughs> again here and there and uh, to just just make it look like it's been well used it might have been a thumb you know lying there and rubbing down on the on the lacquer or whatever just wearing it down a little bit so I just want to make it look not completely uniform all the way over and then we'll just make a all those little color palettes will do them in like a almost like a bit of a rainbow color I think
So as you can see, I'm just kind of layering on a few extra layers of color here and there, just building up the values a little bit. Again, I'm not going super crazy on this. It's not a realism, but I still want to make sure that the picture makes sense. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of this charcoal color and just activate that. And then I'll probably go back in and I'll do a little bit more. I think I'm, I'll probably add a little bit more color, I think, on these books, that especially that Italy and that green, they're not green, the brown book are looking a little bit pale. So I think they might need a little bit more color there just to brighten up a little bit. And then we'll just keep going with that bow and the color palette and the little um, teapot.
I'm definitely jumping around a lot today. I'm just going to go in now and just add a little bit more to this lampshade. I just felt like it needed a little bit more and I thought I'd quickly do that before I forgot about it and then I'll regret it afterwards when I posted this video and it wasn't exactly the way I wanted it to be. So I'm just adding a little bit of that baked earth just to sort of give that little bit more of a warmer glow to it. I think that works really nice getting a little bit of a shadowy sort of area and it's nice and warm. I reckon this little color palette here starts to look starting to look pretty good. 
I'm quite happy with that one now and I'm thinking I might just actually get started on the actual car. So let's, I'm thinking I'll start out with these little um, flag things in the little, what's it called, bunting in the windows there. I've actually decided to leave a couple of these flowers white and that will stand out quite nicely when I do the car so I'm going to do the car quite bright red and that should be a nice contrast to the couple of white flowers now there are a couple of little swirly things there that I see I forgot to color in but I did end up doing them in the same green that I've done all the leaves in so you can just go ahead and do that. I did end up doing it, but I did it off camera.
so I'm gonna start out this car using the poppy red and I do have some other bright red colors that I can use on top if I need to but I want to see how this one goes first it is a really lovely vibrant red not too dark so I think that's gonna look really nice
I decided for all the window trimmings and like underneath the car and stuff I'm gonna go in with the Shiraz color I'm thinking just to have a little bit of a different color compared to the actual car itself so I think that would make a nice a sort of contrast there and then I think with the main color of the car I'm probably gonna go over with one of the brighter reds as well just sort of here and there and just to make it a little bit brighter and I think the combination with that poppy red underneath and then a brighter red on top I think it's going to work really well.
so I'm just going to add a little bit more of the mustard color to inside these windows here I'm just going to do it down the bottom and leave them lighter up the top and I'm kind of just thinking that that sort of the sun rays the last sort of setting sun rays from the sun behind the car there are just kind of shining through the windows and giving them this sort of yellowy glow So I'm just now, last thing I'm going to do is just add in a little bit of this hot red on top of the poppy red here and then I'm just going to just keep going until I'm sort of happy. So this will be, if you're following along, just you'll probably find that your uh, paintbrush strokes have been slightly different to mine. So we might have lighter areas in different places. So just go ahead and put down this sort of hot red wherever you sort of feel like you need a little bit more of a boost and don't worry too much about exactly where I'm putting it just do it wherever you feel like and we should hopefully get about a similar result I did also and I forgot to show this just add a tiny little bit of the charcoal um, color to the door handle there it's white at the moment and I forgot to film it but it's just, you'll see it in the final reveal that that's turned charcoal. And I think I'm just going to let these sort of dry a bit now. I might touch up a little bit more on those spots, but there you go. Here is the final reveal and you can see it's a little bit more even tone now on the car and everything else is the same as I left it as you've already seen so I hope you've enjoyed following this double page spread with me and I've had a lot of fun working with my ink tents they definitely are a much faster medium and they're lots of fun to work with when you kind of get over that initial block being scared with them being permanent and all of that but I think I think we managed to capture the Tuscan feel. So thank you all for watching and I will see you again next time.